Hello, Mel. Uh, everybody. Um, well, Mel, of course you're right. Yeah, well, here's what it is, is that I've always followed psychology, but I don't follow a lot of the detail. I don't put a lot of stock in some of the detailed theories. And when people, for example, are insisting, no, this is a different axis than that, that's just their current working theory. This is like the state of psychological knowledge in scientific terms is like where this knowledge of physics was 2,500 years ago, or the knowledge of medical science was 1,000 years ago, or 500, or whenever the leeches type thing was popular. Okay, so don't put a lot of stock in it, but I study it a lot, and I believe that philosophy is psychology from the inside. So I try to be informed by all of these things. But I don't read as much philosophy I mean, as much as psychology as I do philosophy, I'd rather read like embodied, um, yeah, I'd rather read cognitive uh, psychology, which is, um, you know, more philosophical and from, from uh, you know, the psychological, but it's very interesting. So there's a lot you can learn from the bits and pieces, but I don't, you know, when they have a schema, I've, I've watched them change over my life. They're improving them, and I, and I just want to understand. And I'm trying to sit, figure out what's the system, and then I'll go use it. No, because I know it's changing constantly. I just want to get some knowledge. I want to be understanding it. So what happened is, just recently, with the, the borderline, is I just finally clued on to personality disorders. And... I have always had a theory that everybody was crazy. I felt crazy when I was younger. I feel crazy now in a way. I just feel like balance, like, you know, skepticism is a philosophy about how to calm down. Like, we'll just breathe deeply and meditate. I mean, that's really, the worst thing you could say about it is that in the end, it's just like trying to figure out a way to just calm down, be, be okay, it's okay, you know? So. You know, it's 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 right up the alley of, of stress and all these things. And I had a chaotic childhood, uh, you know, in terms of psychologically and things to think about. So, you know, and nothing scary, right, that I would say was, but just a lot of weird stuff to think about. I think everybody does. And um, so, so I've learned all these little bits and pieces, but I now I've found, wow, this personality disorder idea is sort of in line with sort of how I think about stuff. And I was using... The borderline version as shorthand for all of the different ones and you know because for example composer goes into narcissistic and 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 uh, oh, what's the other one um, sociopath and you know and just and even you know all even Asperger's you know which that's how I'm gonna pronounce that from now on I've decided so um, you know, it's it's like there's related symptoms and that whole thing about, well, a lot of people have different... As a matter of fact, I was reading, and I'm going to go to the Mayo Clinic, is how we're going to get on the big page. Um, the the um, They said most people that with one diagnosed personality disorder at least have at least some symptoms from another disorder. And my theory is sort of everybody has this stuff. Some people are just functional. Like they say with borderline and some of these other personality disorders that a possible cause is abuse as a child. But what if like 50% of the people have these kind of disorders, they're their tendencies. But when they weren't abused, they managed to become functional. You know, they're like, I get really frustrated when I don't do something good. The abusive parent was like, that's the days they beat that kid, which just emphasized that problem. Whereas the good parent was like, oh, honey, you get so frustrated, you're such a perfectionist. They taught that person to deal with that. And that person was always a perfectionist the rest of their life. And that's how come they could be a brain surgeon. You know what I mean? I just think these symptoms, and so let's go through this. So, so you're right, and, and I just am explaining that I, I used uh, borderline. And the reason, too, is with Composer, he's talking about a lot of these symptoms. And I see how there's these bag of symptoms, and it's a swarm like this. And if these 10 take you, then, oh, they diagnose you as this. And if these 10 take you, but there really is a core of what's going on. And the reason I like look at it that way as also is because these are familiar things these are now so people that have you know whatever regularly regulated brain chemistry have these problems anyway now if you have irregularly brain chemistry then it gets harder 
but your brain's really actually working the same. It just becomes harder to do something the brain has to spend energy to do, so you have to spend more energy for it. Maybe, depending on how bad it is, you have to spend two more energy than you can find or whatever, you know, that can work out that way. But my point is, these are things that are in most people's mind, the so-called normal world is crazier than any person who's realized, oh, I have to, I, I'm really stressed. I, I'm really worried. I'm panicking about this. These are all things that have happened to me. It's like you realize that stuff and you can work on it and know that you have that problem. That makes you more sane than all these. I'm sorry, what I don't use this term much anymore, but you know, plastic people to go around like life is perfect and everything's great, but they don't talk to their to their mom or their aunt or something, and which happens to us all. Uh, but they don't quite admit it. They're like, no, I have a, what do you mean? I have a perfectly good relationship and I call her every Sunday or whatever, you know, but they have some issue and everybody has these things and it's like they're the symptoms of personality disorders, not specifically borderline, but it turns out maybe I'm ready to look at one of the, the uh, arrangements that has happened. So I'm, I'm going to go, I want to know a lot about psychology, just moments in the internet. So I'm going to Wikipedia, personality stores. Just kidding. My Mayo Clinic. Okay. Just kidding about that. But I'm just going to go to the Mayo Clinic on personality disorders. I'll put the link down below. Definition by the Mayo Clinic staff. Personality disorder is a type of mental illness in which you have trouble perceiving and relating to situations and to people, including yourself. There are many specific types of personality disorders. In general, having a personality disorder means you have a rigid and unhealthy pattern of thinking and behaving no matter what the situation. This leads to significant problems and limitations in relationships, social encounters, work, and school. In some cases, you may not realize that you have a personality disorder because your way of thinking and behaving seems natural to you and you may blame others for the challenge you face and I would add you may have ways of coping with these tendencies disorder tendency obsessive compulsive terrible thing that consumes your life on the other hand if it doesn't and you know how to say to yourself whatever I, I don't even care if my door's unlocked <laughs> then you can use that focus to do something amazing right so that's the goal is to take these tendencies and if you have a really intense tendency then it might be hard to deal with but you're also one of the people that's going to have an intense ability yeah let's look through this stuff Philoso philosophically excuse me let's look through this stuff philosophically All right, general symptoms of a personality disorder. Now that's what I should have been talking about, is, is a personality disorder. And this guy, Composer, helped me get this term. It didn't click. It's not like I haven't heard these terms, but I just realized now this stuff about this gradient and, and a lot of different ideas I have about psychology that I do know from psychology, uh, cognitive science, and, um, and philosophy sort of seem like they're clicking together for me and it, that doesn't mean I'm getting the answers it means they're shifting there's moving the answers could come but we're a new resting place that'll you know act as an answer until it happens again so this is good when there's tectonic movement that's that's what I'm reacting to in myself okay general symptoms of a personality disorder and I love that they have this category actually of personality disorder in general because that's what I think I was reacting to so, frequent mood swings, stormy relationships, social isolation, angry outbursts, suspicion and mistrust of others, difficulty making friends, a need for instant gratification, poor impulse control, alcohol and substance abuse. Uh, specific types of personality disorders. The specific types of personality disorders are grouped into these into three clusters based on similar characteristics and symptoms. Many people with one diagnosed personality disorder also have signs and symptoms of at least one additional personality disorder. My eyes are all scratchy. I think the cat, the kitten is getting older. And when I pet it now, I'm starting to have the allergic adult cat reaction. Maybe. I don't know. That's what it feels like. So anyway, all right. 
So symptoms. General symptoms of a personality disorder. Personality disorder symptoms include frequent mood swings, stormy relationships, social isolation, angry outbursts, suspicion and mistrust of others, difficulty making friends, a need for instant gratification, poor impulse control, alcohol or substance abuse. It's really this set of symptoms that I'm thinking about when I was talking about, hey, what about the gang stalkers? Because almost every issue falls into this, though. The, and when you talk about another axis, I don't, I don't think we know enough to say different axis like bipolar is it like narcissist, nar narcissistic versus borderline. Well, they're very different. The borderline has this self-esteem thing. The narcissist has this extreme self-esteem, but not really. The extreme self-esteem is through a really a lack. It's just, it turns out to be a different expression, or at least that's arguable. To me, the alternate access to these, to these feelings, and or tendencies and or symptoms is um, the biochemistry. Like some of us are having these symptoms just because we were spoiled as children. Other people are having them because, oh, their ser serotonin doesn't work. Other people are having them because they were abused as children. And maybe because their serotonin doesn't work. And maybe one causes the other. Maybe it's the genetic thing that causes the parent to be abused. You know, who knows? That part's super complicated. That's what we're trying to find out. Specific types of personality disorders. The specific types of personality disorders are grouped into three clusters based on similar characteristics and symptoms. Many people with one diagnosed personality disorder also have signs and symptoms of at least one additional personality disorder. Cluster A personality disorders according to the Mayo Clinic staff. These are personality disorders characterized by odd eccentric thinking or behavior and include, what a subjective stuff, and yet we know it when we see it, but this is like the finding point, I mean, and yet with the gang stalking, you see, okay, this is beyond, we would all say, there's symptoms that we're about to see. The specific types of personality disorders, they say, characterized by odd eccentric thinking or behavior, it's like eccentric, okay. This is, just starts to get into how we all have some of these symptoms, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Some of these might be strength. I personally like eccentric thinking, and if it takes a personality disorder or tendency to have that, if you have a way to balance it out so that you're functional and don't destroy your relationships and make negative experiences out of things that should be positive experiences, then, you know... The, almost everything is like that like it has a time and okay paranoid personality disorder cluster a paranoid personality disorder distrust and suspicion of others believing that others are trying to harm you emotional detachment hostility okay so the gang stalkers definitely have this I think that's pretty clearly gonna be one that you could diagnose if you want to be simplistic but remember, I'm thinking everybody, like I'm so-called normal, I've had all of these symptoms. I've had distrust and suspicion of others. Sometimes it was justified. I believed that others were trying to harm me when they weren't, and when they were. You know, emotional detachment, I probably have that right now. Hostility, and sometimes, sometimes I've thought, geez, I, I should be more hostile about this particular situation. Schizoid personality disorder. Lack of interest in social relationships. Limited range of emotional expression. Inability to pick up normal social cues. Appearing dull or indifferent to others. So it's a big fractured situation. It leads to a distant concept of social relationships. A limited range of emotional expression. So, like with gang stalking, um, I don't really see this one. Um, they don't mention if like voices, hearing voices is in this one, so if it is then yeah, because the voice to skull thing happens. But. Okay, then there's schizotypal personality disorder, peculiar dress, thinking, beliefs, or behavior. Oh my god. Oh my god, so Jimi Hendrix. Perceptual alterations such as those affecting touch. Discomfort in close relationships. Well, okay, so all humans definitely have that one. Flat emotions are inappropriate. Emotional response is inappropriate. I mean, it's just like, because normal society is so fucked up and what it expects and calls appropriate, it's like, to define that by, ugh. 
and yet, like I say, there's an, uh, to me it's clicking that there's an important grain of truth in here somewhere. So I'm just exploring, you know, without judgment of myself or others or people that might have these disorders or, you know, I guess I'm trying to balance and neutralize in that. I'm saying everybody has some of this stuff, let's call them t tendencies and disorders when they get so bad that they're a problem. It's like drinking alcohol, you know, if you drink a lot and beat up your friend, you got a problem. If you uh, drink a lot and celebrate your cousin's wedding, it's not necessarily a problem. Um, uh, indifference to others, magical thinking, believing you can influence people and events with your thoughts, a little bit more specific, I think, than composers, meaning believing that messages are hidden for you in public speeches or displays. Well, right there, that's, that's gang stalking to a, a T, right? The, the believing that messages are hidden for you in public speeches or displays. And this is a thing to me, I mean, I think to actually experience voices or not that, that seem like they could be voice to skull type voices or, you know, people telepathically communicating with you or, or not, that's a huge thing in your life. But I see it also as potentially a threshold thing because like, if you're in a cafe and two people say, funny nose and then they laugh and you think oh, it's my nose is funny I see a, a gradient of, of even things like that but I think so we've had paranoid and schizotypal those do look uh, related and again you know this is just I believe in, in exploring I am want to understand this kind of stuff I'm not claiming to be saying quite the opposite you know, I have heard voices. I don't, this is a difficult situation for me because I think I don't have a serotonin imbalance or anything like that. I could never have noticed a psychological issue that I couldn't feel I was supposed to be responsible for. Of course, the ones that I still am working on, maybe it'll turn out that your brain just wasn't shaped the right way or it didn't, your glands didn't pump out that amount of serotonin that that solution took. I don't know. But I, you know, I'm, I deal with these kinds of things, and I hear voices, and it's just like balanced, and I was atheist sort of naturally, or young, or my parents, I thought they were teaching me to be that way, but they were both actually religious, it turns out, and what? So I'm almost not sure where that came from, but having that perspective, when I ever heard voices in my head, I remember at one point being a kid and being like, it's like there's people watching me, telling me what to do, and stuff, that's funky, I wonder who they are. But I was so, I was a good kid and always did follow the letter of the law, but you couldn't make me think something. Like, you've got to take out the garage, the garbage every day. I, well, I would take out the garbage every day. But you have to think it's okay to beat animals because they need it. And I would be like, no, I don't believe that. You know what I mean? Whatever. I, I had convictions like that. And that was my attitude to voices in my head. So do I, I have a disorder and you know, do I still have it? And I just learned to deal with it because I was lucky and got an early angle to a philosophical idea that allowed me to minimize the impact. It's like people are passing judgment on my life. I wonder who they are. Oh, they don't like this? Well, I guess we'll see if they're right or I'm right and blah, blah, you know. And, and it fades, but there's a million voices in my head and my voice is in my head talking about things and, you know, because I can do this out loud to a camera, I can do it in my head to myself and Yet I've met people that don't have the inside voice they say, which I, seems impossible to me. So, it's like I feel, well, I heard voices too. Is it just because I knew early on? Is it just because maybe there's a chemical thing near the auditory centers where it had a little bit of an echo to it, and I could tell the difference between a voice in my head and a voice in reality, and somebody has that a little different, and it sounds like that sounded real. You couldn't tell the difference because of a mechanical difference. Yeah, I think it is things like that. It's, it's training. Uh, it's tendencies and then there's a lot of chemical imbalances and since so much of brain chemistry is driven even by your diet we probably induce this so somebody with an ordinary quote-unquote brain chemistry uh, system you know might have eaten a little bit of too much of this and not a much of that and maybe with their metabolism in particular or in general it's put them into a certain state where oh they're not having enough of this chemical to allow this thing to happen you know and Maybe they're prone to it, maybe they're not, but it makes these things happen. Yeah. So those are the cluster A personality disorders. Cluster B 
Are personality disorders characterized by dramatic, overly emotional thinking or behavior and include antisocial personality disorder, that's the originally sociopathic or formerly sociopathic, disregard for others, persistent lying or stealing, recurring difficulties with the law, repeatedly violating the rights of others, aggressive, often violent behavior, disregard for the safety and self of others. The gang stalkers don't do this. Quite the opposite. I've seen some that were homeless for various reasons, including being too paranoid about where they were living, you know, to stay there. But they, I've also, there's also one I'm thinking of in particular, and she in, has been in the homeless community, and she's like, don't screw with cops, you don't need to, she's not aggressive, she, you know, I, she could be driven to it, probably, again, who couldn't, but the fact that what she's experiencing or thinks she's experiencing and it's her personal reality is she's not already acting out aggressive it's just not an aggressive tendency that she's got no uh, she's having something that's causing her stress that might create her to be aggressive but no so um you know and trouble with the law well sometimes you try not to have trouble with the law but you're homeless and you get in trouble so but not like trouble with the law from acting out no so interesting. Okay. Borderline personality disorder. Impulsive and risky behavior. Volatile relationships. Unstable mood. Suicidal behavior. Fear of being alone. Um, I don't think I've ever had those. Uh, maybe fear of being alone, I guess. But... You know, I think if I have a disorder about that, it might be that maybe I'm so afraid of being alone that I'm not. I don't know, I felt trained in, as a child. My mom, my dad had the drop out and tune in hippie thing, which, you know, and I took half of that and half of that was like, eh. And then my mom was artist attitude and uh, an environmentalist, and I took, you know, that, you know, and some of it was like, blah, blah. And um, so those things add together to, to really... Um, being an individual and like alone is when what you where you are when you make art so I sort of live by a philosophy of art and so maybe I'm compensating for a fear of being alone by you know it's good to be alone but I do think it's good to be alone so um, and yet the symptoms that that the composer for example mentions seem familiar um, the uh, but I, maybe through inhibition, maybe through just other balancing things, I've had impulsive thoughts, and yet when even when I was a kid, I was the one that was like stopping other kids when they were super impulsive. Like, what? Yeah, I see why you want to do that, but what? Joyride in a car? Yeah, I see why you'd think that's like Disneyland, but it's not gonna be. Think more realistic. I just could visualize it. Volatile relationships? No. Unstable mood? No. I've had a wide range of moods in my life. But I don't think they're unstable. But uh, suicidal behavior, no. But I've thought a lot about suicide. Considered it. I was loosely speaking depressed as a child. Sometimes figuring stuff out, and uh, I never really knew I was depressed. I found out later that when you're clinically depressed, you don't necessarily think or feel that you're sad. There's sort of a, and so I probably wasn't clinically depressed because I was always very interested in projects or I learned to program. There's always stuff like that going on. So. Just loosely speaking, you know, I sad about figuring out my life. Not depressed, which is this weird thing that maybe involves sadness, but is also sort of like a my body. And where I, I always wanted to bother, but I was always intensely sort of, uh, you know, as a bipolar, like intensely interested in going on, but also like, oh, I thought about suicide, and I, as a philosophical kid, because I started thinking of philosophy as such, and studying it around 13. You know, after my whole childhood, trying to think, what is this thing I'm so interested in? What a weird hobby, what is it? Realizable, well, basically it's philosophy. So um, I think a big question for philosophers is, you know, to be or not to be. And, um, and I've answered that. I've answered it when I was really like down on the negative things going on in my life. And, and I decided that, yeah, it's easy to feel like suicidal, like, wouldn't it be just good, let's let me go. But if you're, again, if you're realistic about what it all means and the nothingness, as well as for other people, but also I've done work in my brain to separate. Well, let's say it doesn't matter how it affects other people, just me, you know, 
because it obviously is negative to other people in your life. But, um, and I just decided no. I didn't want to do that. But I could imagine situations where I would. I have a very clear idea of that. Histrionic personality disorder. Constantly seeking attention. Excessively emotional. Extreme sensitivity to others' approval. Unstable mood. Excessive concern with physical appearance. Well, the gang stalker victims do not um, seem to fit this. They think they're the subject of attention, but I guess it would seem more like, it, you know, we're including their way of experiencing it, that they'd rather not have it. They just think they've got it anyway. So it's more that paranoid part. Nar but you see how there's similarities, though? Okay, constantly seeking attention. Not seeking, but obsessed with the concept of attention. See? Like, the, the paranoid is like, somebody's giving me attention I don't want. This one's like, I want attention. They're both obsessed with attention. So in terms of axes, it's like, wait, there's a real similarity here. I see that an obsession with attention would precede either seeking it, avoiding it, or becoming a scientist studying attention. See, somebody that had this obsession, if they could reinterpret it as an obsession for information, instead of getting attention, giving attention, whatever, then they become a great scientist. And everybody just goes, well, how'd you get interested in it? I don't know. I've always been interested in the subject of people giving other people attention. Right? Um, excessively emotional, extreme sensitivity to others' approval. This is another thing I notice. A lot of these, even the ones that haven't stated this so far, for example, this word approval, there's a lot about that. And see, this is, again, people have strange ideas about approval. All, the, all of us... The, whatever we're supposedly functional or not and all the rest. Unstable mood. Excessive concern with physical appearance. Uh, my belief is that everything is functional because if it wasn't functional it wouldn't be keep going. So, And yet everything is dysfunctional because it's not like any car works perfectly. But even a brand new car, if you really want to get scientific, it's like, oh, well, it's missing one millionth of a second per revolution per, or whatever you would measure that in. Okay, narcissistic personality disorder, believing that you're better than others. Okay, fantasizing about power, success, and attractiveness. Okay, that's to most people. Exaggerating your achievements or talents. Again, most people. Expecting constant praise or admir and admiration. Most people. Failing to recognize other people's emotions and feelings. Well, no, that's why most people are narcissistic. And also, they, they learn to ex not to expect the praise, but they pretty much think they deserve it. And shouldn't they? Isn't that positive self-esteem? So see, these are things that you want to have that you should have, right? Like sometimes you should, I've met really humble and super competent, awesome people, producer people, and they're humble and that's great. I like that. And I try to be that way. But sometimes you find out, hey, you got to promote yourself. Nobody else will hear about your achievement or know that you thought it was great or realized it was great or know the parts that, you, that won't be communicated unless you communicate them. It feels like exaggerating your achievements when you do that. Maybe you're not exaggerating. You find out, oh, it's a judgment call. So sometimes it's okay. Somebody's got to say, hey, and to your own horn actually is something that humble people need to understand, you know, to grow. Because as great as humility is, it's like, hey, sometimes you should be well, humble enough to go, you know what, I like myself too, and there's nothing wrong with that, because I'm just an ordinary person. We, we all sometimes like ourselves. And it might be the, the smell of your own fart, but, you know, just admit it. Okay. We're failing to recognize other people's emotions and feelings. And that's sort of also where this stuff comes into the autism angle, because there's like... Sometimes there's a failure to understand people's language. Well, what if there was uh, subtlety to understanding people's uh, facial expressions that was built in, and we have we are so widespread and, and well educated and cosmopolitan that you know it doesn't always work, and we just misunderstand each other, and that leads to these problems. Because what if you can't understand the people around you when you're five, and maybe if you're in a different family, you get them. But in your family, you just don't get them. It's that different. You just don't get it from five. And your brain is developing while that happens. Right? That would have an effect on you. Maybe because maybe the human brain needs to feel that it's being understood to develop one way rather than another. Okay. On the other hand, my real point is that all of these tendencies are things that that could be related to, to some strength. Now, things like narcissistic, that's this kind of personality uh, 
you know, bastard personality disorder that you think? Well, no. Fantasizing about power, success, and attractiveness? Yeah, of course you should do a little bit of that. Come on. Exaggerating your achievements? I just talked about that. Expecting constant praise and admiration? Well, no, they use the word constant. But sometimes you can go, you know what? I do deserve a little praise and admiration. And why am I not getting it? You figure out. Change something about yourself or even just say, hey, you guys. You know, I want a Christmas bonus. And you find out, hell, if you have one, we think you're great. You know, and you find out, oh, well, I was supposed to expect that, and then that's that's the only missing piece. They did praise me, but they thought I didn't like them. Compliment me or whatever. That happens to me because people compliment me. They should be in the disorders here somewhere, and people compliment me. I'm like, I don't trust you now. Why did you compliment me? Okay, cluster C personality disorder. The, these are personality disorders characterized by anxious, fearful thinking or behavior and include avoided personality disorder, hypersensitivity to criticism or rejection, feeling inadequate, social isolation, extreme shyness in social situation, and timidity. Uh, not the gang stalkers, and an interesting one you don't hear talked about that much. Dependent personality disorder, excessive dependency, dependence on others, submissive toward others, desire to be taken care of, tolerance of poor or abusive treatment, Urgent need to start new relationship when one has ended. Well, basically, this is what the uh, um, fundamentalist Mormon um, uh, polygamists are, are trying to train their women into that one. Obsessive compulsive personality disorder. Preoccupation with orderliness and rules. Extreme perfectionism. Desire to be in control of situations. Inability to discard broken or worthless objects. Inflexibility. If there's a way to function that, then you might use that when you're obsessively compulsive about facts and become a world-renowned journalist that saves the world with information that the rest of us would never have, you know, been, like, energetic enough to follow up on all those details. Um, but by the way, obsessive compulsive personality disorder isn't the same as obsessive compulsive disorder, a type of anxiety disorder. Okay, when to see a doctor. If you have any signs of symptoms of a personality disorder, see your doctor, mental health provider, or other health care professional. Untreated personality disorders can cause significant problems in your life, and they may get worse without treatment. 